so we are now officially on air. Uh, welcome to this Google Hangout on day four of Bring Your Own Device for Learning in January 2015. And today's topic is collaboration. But first of all, I thought we'd just introduce ourselves quickly. So my name's Sam Illingworth. I'm a lecturer in science communication at Manchester Metropolitan University in the UK. And I have an interest in mobile devices because I use them quite a lot in my teaching as a way of communicating and also connecting with my students. OK, uh, Isabel. Um, so I'm a senior lecturer in animal therapy. And I'm, um, I, I've, I, was, I was involved in one of Chrissy's previous courses, um, the Flexible Distance and Online Learning course. And um, this is sort of like a follow on to that for me because I'm looking at using more digital methods in my teaching. As, as students change in the way that they communicate with each other, I think we need to keep up with that. And so I'm just looking for new inspiration. Excellent. And uh, Deborah? Hi, um, I'm Debbie Bath. Um, I seem to be on here twice. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, uh, Open Educational Resources and Open Educational Practice Project Manager. I have to look to the ceiling because it's a long title and I keep forgetting what it is. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I, I work on a project called OER Wales Cymru, um, although I um, I, I, I'm also studying, I study with the Open University, I'm studying an MA um, in online and distance education um, and um, I've just got a general interest in kind of mobile devices and things like that really and um, also I work with Chrissy on um, the conference, the OER 15 conference um, which is coming to Wales in April. Quick plug, shameless plug. <laughs> shameless, shameless, plugs are shameless plugs are absolutely okay. Um, <laughs> So the, the, the common thread seems to be Chrissy Naranzi as the common thread to every single question in the world ever seems to be. I think six degrees of separation is probably more like two. Um, so I just wanted to kick things off really just by talking about a little bit about collaboration and just a couple of questions I thought we could just share some thoughts and ideas. Specifically, I wanted to just ask what programs or apps you use to collaborate and why. Uh, Debbie, do you want to maybe kick things off there? Um, I've used um, Blackboard Collaborate um, in, in terms of um, online meetings and um, organizing the conference, second plug, I'll shut up now. Um, <laughs> I also, um, I've used Google Hangouts um, before, um, not on a um, more than two people, if you see what I mean, so this is quite good, looking at the kind of um, the selection that we, we, we've got here. Um, I'm just trying to think, obviously, um, I use, I have a, um, have a blog, um, I use social media with Twitter and that kind of stuff, um, and good old fashioned face to face, um, trying to get people to work with me really, I suppose. <laughs> Excellent. And, and Isabel, what about you? Um, I suppose the majority of mine is um, face to face still, and by email. But I am increasingly like I've used Google Hangouts, and I like um, and the the Google Drive aspect of that, and it's really um, interesting seeing stu we've seen students use that more for group work, Skype and Google Hangouts, um, and about I've been encouraging the students to use Google Drive where they can all work on the document at the same time rather than having to what I found traditionally they email each other various versions and then they get to the final presentation and they'll say oh, it's the wrong version, or somebody will say, but that's not the right slides. And um, so I just find that, that, so that's what I'm using most of the time, I suppose, Google Hangouts, Google Drive. Need more yeah. inspiration. <laughs> no, no, that's very good. So I think um, it's really interesting with Google Docs, and Debbie, I saw you uh, nodding your head there as well. Do you use Google Docs a lot? Yeah, I use Google Docs um, on the on the drive, and I actually use it in combination with other things as well. Um, so I use it in combination with Collaborate. Um, I use it in combination with something called Basecamp, which is a project management tool that I use. Um, and that kind of, um, although that it's a bit like um, it's a bit like Facebook for for projects, if you see what it means. So it provides you with a central hub where people can. Um, can meet um, and then I kind of link out to documents so that we can work on them together um, whether or not that's a spreadsheet or a, or a report or, or whatever and it, you know it's, it's very useful Google Drive I think is, uh, is very clever I use it for all sorts of things really so I think um, 
my uh, my my only concern with Google Drive is that I find it really weird when you're typing and you can see somebody else typing at the same time. It just, yeah. it just looks really really strange. And they've but, always got really weird identities like anonymous fox and <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> yeah, there's some really nice alliteration, isn't there? Like, uh, in, yeah, exactly, exactly, like anonymous ar armadillo or yeah. uh, surreptitious um, spherical shell or something like that. That always, <laughs> always seems to come across quite well. It, Isabel, I just want to come back to something that you touched on, and I think uh, Debbie, you did as well, and that is, I think, the importance of face to face. And do you see that still as really being crucial to have um, essential collaboration? At least in some form, I think you need face to face. It's one of the reasons I like Google Hangout because you can actually see the person you're talking to, and you can so you can. It's a better engagement and um, uh, a better indicator of their engagement. Um, but I do think it, I I like the mix model where some's done using other forms. And um, I mean, it was funny. I was only listening to um, Deb that um, it, it's. Um, Facebook, both for students, so our courses they tend to have each have their own student page and they share ideas through that. But also we have ones for you know like the far, for farm research and so lecturers are using it as well. Um, but obviously that moves away from the face to face. But it's that combination of both I think that's important. Yeah, Debbie, have you got anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I suppose um, I, I, an observation really, because I've just recently done um, an e-moderating course, um, which is entirely online, and um, they introduced this year for the first time um, Collaborate, this is with um, University of South Wales, and they introduced Collaborate sort of halfway through the module, it's only a, it was a little 10 week course, but I found, you know, with my particular learning style that having the ability to see people face to face really helped in terms of building that relationship with them. So even though we had a kind of environment or a, you know, a VLE to, um, to use and kind of um, interact in, a, in a, an asynchronous way I suppose, having that visual really really helped me and I would run in the course. Um, and I said, but having said that, <clears throat> On one of the um, modules that I did with the university, we also used Collaborate um, as a group pack, five or six students did at all. It was just literally run by students for students. And none of us were brave enough at that time to use the video. Okay. So we had, you know, but we, we still found that we had that connection, you know, in terms of almost like an old fashioned um, telephone, isn't it, you know? And I was going to ask, with Google Hangouts, can you also share screens and things like that? Um, yeah, you can. So to give you an example, I'll just screen share the, um, I don't know, let's, let's screen share. I had my agenda up earlier. So I'll screen share my agenda with you um, if it's there. So if I go to File, Open Recent, this is my, here's my agenda. So you should be able to present this to everyone if I'm looking now. Can you see that agenda now? No, it tells us you're presenting something, it but says, I can't actually see anything. I think <laughs> nice I think I think the reason for that is that it my Word document has actually stopped working. So <laughs> what I'll do what I'll do instead is I'll just I'll screen share um my emails. So hey. you can see that um so you can actually see the email details there. It, it can be done. There's basically if you just are you using a PC I mean, laptop, yeah. If you if you just hover your mouse to the left of the um, screen, oh. there's a number of things. So you can click on chat. You can click on the second one down is screen share. So if you click on screen share, you can then um, share one of your documents. Um, so I don't know why my word. I think words just stopped working on my computer. But if it hadn't. And if it was being sensible, then I'd just be able to share that document with you. Um, have you have you used it? Have you used Screen Share before, um, Isabel? Um, I think so. When we because um, when I've collaborated with people before and we've been working <laughs> on documents, I'm pretty sure we've done Screen Share then. But I find they keep changing Google Hangouts, and every time I use it, I, I can't find anything. <laughs> yeah, things thing, things things do seem to change quite quickly, don't they? Um, but the re I've used Google Hangouts quite a lot for international conference calls, just because they're 
it's, it's, it's a bit more manageable than than Skype, and you know, obviously as well um, as that, you can if you want to do this, which is essential for any um, <laughs> serious telecom. <laughs> Those glasses are quite nice, actually. Um, so, do you, you know, Debbie? Just going back to what you're talking about, this old-fashioned idea of like a telephone, but still, still collaborating. Do you find that remote collaboration um, has any barriers that face-to-face -face ones don't? Um. Well, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it, 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 and again, it depends how you're actually interacting with that person, isn't it? I mean, I, I tend to find that, um, you know, the, the people that I've engaged with in the kind of the open world, you know, um, are so helpful and so generous and so willing to collaborate. Um, you know, I think that think that really, really helps. And and almost with that kind of philosophy in mind of people willing to to collaborate the tool doesn't really matter, you know, because I think people will always find a way, you know, um, and people kind of reach out to, to, to people. Um, but I can, you know, I take the point that, you know, if it's um, if it's face to face, it's probably much easier and much quicker to build a relationship. Um, but certainly these days with, um, with the facilities that we've got with the tech, it, I think it just it just adds to that and makes everything easier. You know, when you think back, you know, 15, 20 years, you know, if you were trying to reach out to somebody, you obviously had the telephone, you obviously had, um, you know, conferences and things like that. But there was a lot less immediacy about things. Um, and I think, you know, the tech that we've got now really helps with things like that. No, definitely. Isabel, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I think the one of the disadvantages without sending lots of reminders is that it, when you're when you're collaborating with somebody locally and you see them face to face it, it's easy because then you're constantly reminded of it so it's a bit sometimes the the more long distance ones facilitated by digital means it can be a bit of a case of out of sight out of sight out of mind um, but apart from that I think nowadays it's so, it's just so much easier I mean from when I think that's when I was a student and I traveled halfway across the country to have a conversation with um, a face-to-face -face conversation with a uh, an academic, and nowadays you just wouldn't need to do that, and that's why where I think the which adds to that um, immediacy that um, Debbie mentioned. Yeah, I think I, just, I think Debbie as well just made a really interesting point that she talked about um, the fact that you've got. We're just saying, Debbie. That you, you mentioned this idea that you know you've got this, these toolkits that are like Google Hangouts or Skype or whatever. But I think it's really important, you know, as with as with all apps, really, that all it is is a a, a memoir, if you will, or you know, a something to help you to collaborate. Without those key skills of collaboration underneath it all, I think you'd still struggle to 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 actually do anything meaningful. Yeah, good, good point. And, and massive apologies. So I just went to kill my phone. My hair <laughs> just going off, and I couldn't shut it up. So um, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. And and you put that far more eloquently than I was uh, trying to earlier on. Um, but yeah, the underlying skills, I think, definitely. Um, if you've got that kind of good people person, I think that that kind of overrides a lot of these um these kind of tools that we've got. But um. I mean, I tend to like um, being able to see somebody face to face as well. But I suppose what I've learned is that I'm I'm equally um, able to form relationships when you don't have that face to face thing as well. You know, when if you think about it, with the um, the chat that we've been doing recently, um, you know, it's it's actually really um, sort of inspiring, really, how people reach out on Twitter and then and then start to form these little relationships. It's it's really interesting. No, I think I think that's a really really good point. Um, have you have you been getting involved with the tweet chats as well, Isabel? I have, and the funny the funny thing is, I think Debbie, we had a conversation on Twitter the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really funny there, in faces to to because the the the, the um, icons are quite small in Twitter, and it, like mine is randomly me on a horse, and you know you can you wouldn't be able to recognise me at all from it. <laughs> <laughs> we should all have a have a, um, a t-shirt with our Twitter ID on it. <laughs> it, it has to be said I wouldn't I, I didn't recognize you at first Isabel without the horse but now that you've said that it, a lot of things are coming into uh, are coming into focus yeah 
similarly, I think um, people seem to not recognize me when I'm actually in um, non-monochromic tones, which is quite interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, to, to, to move away from that is good. Um, I guess just the one thing I just wanted to ask really as well, um, you know, wrapping up in the next five or ten minutes, is just if you had a top tip for collaborating that you would want to share. So if someone said to you, um, you know, if there's one thing that you'd really recommend doing in order to effectively collaborate, what what is the one piece of advice that you would you would share? Uh, Debbie, do you want to uh, maybe give one piece of um, sterling advice there? I suppose it's um, it's having that leap of faith, really, and just putting yourself out there. Um, you know, it can be quite a hard thing to do, particularly when people are, um, you know, starting to use social media perhaps for the first time, um, or or again, even some of the tools. You know, I mean, it's like anything. If you haven't used something before, you, there is that element of the unknown. But I think, um, particularly looking at this aspect, is. Um, Put yourself out there, you know. Take a deep breath and actually say to people, you know, are you interested in working together? Um, you know, I mean, sometimes these things happen naturally, but sometimes you have to force the issue, don't you, in a nice way? No, definitely. And definitely. I wish I put some makeup on. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's a it's a problem I have every morning when I see myself on screen. Uh, Isabel. And um, yeah, well, I would agree with everything um, that Debbie said, but it's also um, for me that the thing is making sure you've got clarity, so mm -hmm. that at the end of any meeting or anything like that, you know exactly what everybody's role is, what they're doing, so that you don't end. And I mean, I think that goes. That's that's one of those as you were saying earlier, having those basic skills. That doesn't matter whether you're face to face collaborating or um, collaborating. Um, at distance by digital means, they're the sort of things that you need. You know, so when you've got a project to do, or you've got something that you want to take forward, you need to know what each person is doing. And I think that doesn't matter what medium you're doing it through. No, yeah, I think, I I think mean, that's really good advice. I was just going to say that obviously in my in my kind of day to day working life, you know, as a project manager, this is it's a new role to me. I wasn't doing it um, you know, this time last year, um, and um, you know, I have to work with all the Welsh HE institutions in Wales, um, and um, you know, try and kind of work with them all, even though they all work in a slightly different way and it's very remote and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's um, it's quite interesting really that you building that network, that secure network at the beginning, um, you know, I had to kind of go to people, introduce myself, say who I was, you know, what I was trying to achieve and you're very, um, you know, you, you've hit the nail on the head there, Isabel, in terms of the clarity um, of roles and also what, what your long-term goal is and what you're actually trying to get out of things. So, um, you know, it's um, it's very important to make sure that uh, everyone is on the same page. So uh, yeah, I agree. No, I think that's really good advice from from everyone. And I think the the only thing I I guess I'd add to that is you know exactly like you say you shouldn't just you shouldn't be afraid I think to to start these conversations because most of the time you know when you're in a if it, either in face to face if you're at a conference. And you're thinking, oh my lord, that's such and such. They're such a senior academic. I'm really scared of going near them. They'd be absolutely delighted to talk to you. And similarly with you know Twitter and things, it's just great to be able to send out a tweet to someone and say, hi, I'm really interested in your work. I wonder if you want to talk about this. And I think bringing your own device for learning is amazing for that because it's a really, really inclusive environment with a friendly network of people who love collaborating, who love working with other people, and who love learning together. And so I hope people get a lot out of this week, as, as I'm sure they will. Um, so yeah, are there any final thoughts to um, say before we wrap up? Great bow tie. Oh, oh great bow tie. Okay, well, yeah, there, there, is, there is a collection of about 30 at the moment. So <laughs> the Bring Your Own Device for Learning community can short slowly be revealed them one by one over the years. Um, so I just want to say as a quick advert, I believe that Debbie's got a conference coming up somewhere in Wales that she would like a lot of us to attend to. So please uh, listen back to that. And also there is the tweet chat this evening at 8 o'clock on the topic of collaboration. Um, so thanks very much Isabel and Debbie for joining me. I'm going to stop broadcasting in a second but do stay there and we can just say goodbye. But thanks everyone for listening. I know there's been quite a few of you listening and watching in as well and um, we know you're not voyeurs but you're usually enjoying the process and thanks very much. Bye now. Bye. Bye.